<clears throat> hello, 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 everyone. Welcome. Uh, the very final day of, uh, of January 31st, and in a very crucial week ahead, right? Uh, if you're following the news, you know there's a pack week full of uh, meetings from central banks, the, the Fed, ECB, Bank of England, a lot of earning releases from the tech giants, OPEC meeting as well, NFP week as well. So a lot, a lot, a lot of volatility is expected on all these announcements. And we have already seen the market actually moving quite significantly ahead of these events. But today, Sivendi has to do with X strategies and not I, and um, not about fundamentals. So I have put the handout on, so you feel free to download it. It's in the handout section. Uh, and this is a two-slot uh, uh, webinar uh, because a lot of it's, 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 uh, there are a lot of slides. Um, I tend to split this uh, this webinar. Okay, but as usual, I would like to confirm me that you can hear me loud and clear first before we. Uh, start the session. Okay, so what is my question? Q&A, Q&A is here. Perfect. So until I have any feedback from you in regards to the audio and the um, and the slideshow. Oh, I already have. Thank you very much, Aundo. Thank you very much. Welcome once again. So I'll go through the disclaimer warning as usual, and we will be ready to start. So this material is provided as a general marketing communication for information purposes only and does not constitute an independent investment research. Um, and I am in the wrong. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Sorry. 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 Just a second. I just realized that I'm sharing the wrong version. Oh yeah. Okay. Here we are. So this material is provided, is provided as a general marketing communication for the purpose of, uh, of for information purposes only. Does not constitute an independent investment research. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as containing investment advice or an investment recommendation or a solicitation for the purpose of buying or selling of any financial instruments. All information provided is gathered from reputable sources and any information contained an indication of past performance is not a guarantee or reliable indicator of future performance. Users acknowledge that any investment leveraged product is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the users are solely responsible and liable. We assume no liability for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. This communication must not be reproduced or further distributed without our prior written permission. Risk warning, trading leverage products such as forex and derivatives may not be suitable for investors as they carry a high degree of risk to your capital. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks involved, take into account your investment objectives and level of experience before trading. And if necessary, seek independent advice. You can find our risk uh, disclosure, the full risk disclosure on our website, uh, guys. So feel free to check any legal documentation that you might be interested. Everything is online. If you cannot find it, send a, a quick text to support um, and they will help you. So admin is out of the way. That's me. I'm skipping myself and let's start to this very first episode of Exit Strategies. So. Uh, how many people are here? 16. Hmm. Just one tenth. It's just 10% 10, 10 of the people registered. That's a bit weird for exit strategy, but nevertheless. So, uh, exit strategies, and hopefully you will enjoy it uh, because it's quite easy. We could say to, no, it's not easy, but most of the people find easy to uh, to find uh, to the trigger point to enter the market, but uh, they're they're getting a bit greedy or stubborn and they don't really use stop losses or they don't want to exit. Uh, if they are losing, a lot of emotions have been driving, um, um, are, are driving uh, the trading for, um, especially when it's, when it's time to close your trade with or without profit. So that's why we're doing this. Um, uh, this webinar because it's even more 
important to be aware or to have a strategy, to follow a strategy, um, uh, an exit strategy, rather than uh, to have an entry strategy. It's more important than the, uh, the spot in an entry level and open a position, okay? So, so here what we will be studying today, we will be studying the basic principles that you need to uh, know, you need to follow after uh, you have uh, uh, you have uh, triggered a position uh, and uh, you have entered the market because as I said, um, you need to um, you need to be aware, uh, you need to understand how, why, and when to use um uh, to 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 um to spot an exit signal uh, and how to use it so you need to be aware how to how and when to exit the trade with or without loss, without a profit okay because sometimes it's just going against us so we need to um exit or at least to break even okay So, so this is what we're gonna see in this session. This session will be it will help you, or I hope that it will help you uh, to use both simple multiple price targets to uh, to understand uh, what to use as exit signals, uh, to when to exit the trade based on the time limit that you might use. And this, I hope that it will be useful for you uh, because a lot of times, as I already said. The market goes to a so to certain levels that might work as an entry level, uh, but then you see trade signal, and after that nothing happens. So you need to know what to do in in these sort of uh, situations. So let's move on. Good morning from Burudi. Oh, welcome, Eric. Welcome. So be able to use both simple and multiple price targets, as I said, understanding what to use as exit signals, know when to exit uh, trade. And this is the, what we're gonna see today, the, the three, uh, these three crucial points. So let's do some basics first, okay? Some basics first, such as the price targets. So price targets, price targets, are predetermined or if you if they are not you're not this uh, if you're not deciding in advance what you should use as a target for your trades you're mistaken these are some of the basics they should be predetermined levels at which a position will be exited and there are a couple of words keywords over here the, ver the first of which is predetermined and will be exited that are the most important of all and you should you should um, uh, you should follow this kind of mentality I will say I mean if you don't have a plan beforehand because having a plan requires predetermined targets and exit levels right so predetermined um uh, levels uh to exit the position so if you don't have a plan before hand in place if you don't predetermine the levels where you go into trade and you will um um and you and um so that would be just the possibility of 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 um this ending uh, badly for you is it's, it's, it's increasing. Um, so we want the probabilities on our side, right? So if you don't have a plan, predetermined plan, then there is nothing to actually uh, um, as I said, the probabilities of being wrong are are are, are high. So um, 
you haven't figured out the way, if you have not figured out the way to limit the risk, then this is a mentality of, of a gambler, I would say. Okay, so, just, oops, sorry, here we are. So target levels needs to be realistic. What I mean by that, it's all about risk management for those that they have seen before um, our webinars, uh, what is a risk management, what is a money management, a man management. Um, so targets needs to be realistic. Not too far away from your entry, not too tight as well. They need to be um, um, at an appropriate reasonable level. That's why uh, support and resistance or support and resistance levels uh, tend to be used as the, as target levels um, or uh, all these uh, technical indicators uh, which are actually using for their collision are using historical data. Are help us to can help us to figure out an appropriate target level. I mean, don't get greedy just without thinking, without doing the necessary investigation, the necessary um, um, uh, your necessary, the necessary homework. We we say, don't just put uh, the targets far, far away just to benefit more. No, it could easily turn back where it was without triggering your your tracker or without uh, reaching your target it needs to be um, uh, reasonable and needs to be based on the historical data on support and resistance levels on some uh, risk and reward uh, ratio that you might have in advance you have predetermined okay so um, and that's where um, the risk management and the technical analysis falls. So, at the same time, however, uh, let's, if here we are. At the same time, you need to have in mind that target levels needs to be far enough to provide an adequate risk and reward ratio. Okay, that risk uh, and reward ratio needs to be at least two to one. Um, uh, one to two, sorry, ratio, uh, two to one depends uh, whether or how you have it, reward to risk, like I have it over here, should be two to one at least. Uh, but even if you want to go higher, uh, be careful how high you could um, set your reward and risk ratio. Okay, 10 to one is not an option, for example. It's too far away. And it's too big, so you increase the risk with this way. Um, so it needs to be as an adequate reward to risk ratio. Uh, it needs to be at least two to one, but preferably a bit higher, not high, uh, not too much. However, and I will show you an example how you can actually figure out what would be a good way of determining your reward to risk ratio, just to understand what I mean. Uh, not too high either. So, so what does risk and reward ratio means basically? Okay, is how much you are willing to risk, and how much you are you you want to be rewarded, right? So how much you are looking to gain um, uh, in every trade that you're taking. So let's assume that um, um, that you have decided to take an entry and you want to gain at least $100 for every $50 that you are risking, so to double your money. So, you, 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 so this is a, a reward to risk two to one. So you want to gain at least 100 for every $50 that you are risking. This is... This is just a, my way to make you understand what the risk and reward is and how it uh, works. 
So based on this, uh, you will set your targets and stop loss uh, level at least. So you, you will first you will set your target to, uh, at least twice as far from the entry price as the stop loss is from the entry price. So if you're, let's say if you're, I don't know, if your uh, stop loss is uh, 10 pips away from the entry, then based on a two to one uh, reward and risk ratio, your target should be uh, 20 pips away from the entry. Okay. Obviously, uh, uh, you can take multi targets as well. Okay, the 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 uh, the price targets can be either single or multiple, meaning that with a single target, this position is exited entirely. But with multiple targets, the position is exited in stages. Okay, so far, so far, so good. Let's move further. Okay, I'll wait a bit. Let's move on. Okay, let's go to the more exciting stuff. So I mentioned before the single price targets. Uh, we we're gonna move on to the multiples as well, but uh, as well. But let's take it step by step. So single price targets. Okay, just come on. Actually, let me let me explain a bit. So single price targets, right? Uh, as I said, it's when your uh, uh, you, you, is um, is is the is it just a single target, just one target? So your position will close and close entirely if it kicks your target. It won't be uh, closing partially. So there might be several ways to set a single price target. Okay, but I'm going to give you examples. I'm not uh, claiming that this is going to be um, like you need to only stick to the ones that we're gonna present today. No, there are many strategies out there. Each one of us, of you might have already figured out his own uh, way of, uh, of, of finding targets, uh, single, multiple ones, etc. But these are just some examples on how you can uh, figure out uh, the target, your targets. Um, so I'm going to present a set, a set of uh, a different ways to find your um, uh, single price targets and multiple uh, 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 price targets. So I'm giving you some ideas and some basics, basically, so that you can extend it uh, or expand your knowledge by doing your own study as well which is very important. I mean, one of the most important things in is, uh, you need to, to, to understand this, is to become independent. We're trying to help as much as we can. We're trying to provide you at least, to help you at least with the basics, but you need take, to take it a step onwards, okay? Uh, you need to become an independent thinker. You need to become uh, independent in your own analysis, independent financially, and et cetera. So here is an example that might seems familiar for some of you. I'm not sure. Uh, interrupt me if I'm wrong. By the way, you can ask anything you you want, guys. Okay, I'm here to help. So feel free to to stick on the question uh, box. Anything, anything that you want me to explain further. So, so here's an example. We have a triangular formation. Many, many times in the charts, in the live charts, we could spot, we can spot, um, oops, sorry, we can spot the triangle. So I think I spotted one yesterday with cable, even though I think it's, it was that one. Uh, let me check. What was that one? I don't remember, to be honest. Not Ah, yeah, it will, it's an old one. It has already broken. So I did try to connect the the fractals, the the peaks. 
at the bottoms over here and I spotted the triangle which has already broken okay so many many times when we're scanning our charts uh, and etc we're spotting some kind of uh, candlestick formation so one of which is the triangle formation where the price hits a certain level uh, that it can penetrate straight away so it's moving within this kind of shape let's say um so um so, so just 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 to explain briefly because i don't know how many people over here are uh, newbies or not just to explain briefly tri tri triangular formation um so it is where the price hits as i said certain levels that it can penetrate straight away and then uh we have some kind of a sideways movement uh or a movement within uh those this uh, formation higher lower higher lower unable to exit it so uh movement to uh um rising higher from its bottom level or turning lower from this uh top um uh, barrier um so why this is useful because any exit from this formation either to the upside even we see man, managing to exit to break this not penetrate to actually break um, uh, uh, any of these barriers either to the upside or to the downside that is a trigger a signal to enter the market uh, short or long so if it breaks the upper barrier that's a that triggers a bullish momentum a long position while if it breaks downwards exit exit the triangle low, uh, from the uh, on the um, uh, downside that's a short a possible short uh, signal but why the in this case the triangle the this triangular formation is useful it is useful because with the use by finding by measuring the width of the triangle we can easily spot a potential target level okay so let's assume that the this uh, this asset um uh, breaks out here so breaks the upper level so as i said this is a long position if that something like that happens so by measuring the width of the triangle okay and you can find the target level because you can use this width and measure the same distance from the breakout to the potential target level do you get what i mean so assuming that the market might break out from here okay here okay uh, then you can actually do your uh, projections based on the width of the formation and get a target level um, um, and you're setting your target level with the same way, um, you can use actually the width of a price channel. Also, the, not only for triangle formations, I mean, uh, the price channels can also use the, the width of the price channels can also be used as a target if you are, uh, if your price is trending higher in a channel and then you're buying somewhere uh so i have a channel over here you see so the, the 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 body you see this is a channel right so it's keep moving fluctuating within a channel so uh, uh, the theory says that if the asset has been spotted moving within a channel then every time that it that it tests the lower level of the channel it will uh it, it will rebound while every time it's retesting the upper level it will pull back so using the width of the channel the, the, you can set your target again measuring so once you see it um bouncing away from the low line measure again and set your target 
at the same level as the width of the channel has suggested. And I don't see any questions, so I just assume that we are okay so far, okay? So, same mentality, okay? If your price is trending higher in a, ch in a channel, then you are buying somewhere here, as I said, and then you can your exit could very, very well be at the upper end of the channel. Because it's the, it's the width, is what we said. So uh, at the channel line, now the price rarely moves directly upwards, but whenever the price moves closer to that level, that might be a very good spot to exit your trade, okay? So, so if you don't put it exactly on the trend line, just slightly below it, okay? Just to be in a good spot to exit the trade. Let's move on. Here we are. Now, again, single price targets again. Um, so another potential tools that you could you could use uh, to figure out your single price targets are as are, are as I said, support and resistance levels. So um, support and resistance levels. Uh, are the most common, popular uh, tool to um, exit your trades, okay? So let's assume that uh, uh, you have done the necessary homework, you have spotted some uh, support and resistance levels in the weekly chart, then some support and uh, resistance in a daily chart. So um, if you're a medium ter term trader, obviously. Uh, so, so if you have seen the, uh, let's assume that the, let's, let's take this as an example. Let's assume that this is Okay, this is the um, the weekly time frame where we are seeing the price to move sideways, right? Sideways, bouncing between these two levels. So this is the resistance area, and this is the weekly support area. Okay, and it's moving sideways. So we have seen this in the weekly chart. Let's assume that it's a weekly chart. Okay, so we can see that the price is resisting to break this level and it's also resistance to move below a uh, break this support level so this could be your potential target levels if you are a buyer somewhere close to the bottom or below the mid of this channel or you can be a seller if you have seen the uh, asset pulling back moving away from the from the resistance level okay so um uh, what else i wanted to say over here so risk multiples let's see So here is the resistance level that um, uh, let's assume that, as I said, we're in a in a in a sideways movement. We are in a uh, in consolidation mode with the asset moving sideways between this within this range. Okay, okay, and uh, you have spotted. Let's assume that you have spotted. You have seen it pulling. So let me put the let me have I use my uh, laser point or actually the pen. Okay, let's assume that um, it was it, it was on the resistance area. Okay, it was on the resistance area. It was over here, uh, and it started slowing down, reverting from that level, and you decided to enter a short entry, okay? 
So, okay. Okay, so let's assume that the um, that the target it is 45 pips away. So the target is the bottom of the channel. Okay. So first of all, um, as we said, we have this actually. Actually, let's do the yes. Okay, so we have seen it pull it back. We have spot this candle at the resistance level. By the way, this candle you can see that this candle has a small body, right? Very small body and a long tail. Okay, so that what that means it means that sellers, despite this, so so you see buyers try to push and push and push and push the price higher. But the sellers have managed to get back the price lower and actually close below the open price. So there is this kind of candles indicate that there is more bears than bulls in the markets, regardless of the fact that uh, it's at the top of the channel. So you have spotted, let's assume that you have spotted this kind of candle at the resistance level. Okay, and you would like to take a short entry. Um, uh, using the uh, using the width of the channel. Okay, so can any one of you, uh, um, Bogani, are you asking what happened with the euro dollar this week? Everything has to do with the anticipation of the Fed. As I said earlier, we have the Fed meeting tomorrow, today and tomorrow. So the decision will be taken tomorrow. It will be announced tomorrow. So everything's driven, uh, not all, only euro dollar. All these pullbacks that we have seen, the pressure in the stocks, the pressure in oil, the pressure uh, in um, the, this uncertainty on uh, in this sideways movement in uh, um, um, in dollar, uh, the pressure on gold, the pressure uh, even in, in cryptos. So all this is ahead of the of the central banks, unfortunately. So um, we have seen all these pullbacks ahead of the central bank, so it might be profit taking as well before, because it's the end of the month as as well. But it's also yeah, it has a bit of a repositioning um, ahead of these events. Okay. Um, as you can see, this is my daily chart. It's, it's not changing. The overall trend hasn't really changed. It's, it's for the time being. It's just a pullback. So I'm getting back to my strategy. Excuse me for the, sorry for the, for changing the subject. So as I was saying, let's assume that we are on the top of the channel, the resistance level. Decide we have spotted a bearish candle that triggers that the, the pullback has started with sellers in control. And we decided to take a trade at the, bottom of the channel. So there are several ways to do it. You can either use as a target the bottom, okay, or, okay, um, or you can use uh, the previous lows, previous lows, okay, but for the time being, my example over here is at the bottom. So the distance from the closing price when I spotted my entry down to the bottom of the channel was 45 pips. So I knew what, what target I will use. Now is the time to set my another exit. Exit strategy requires target level and exit level as well, a stop loss. Okay, because if it turns against me, I want to make sure that it closes at an appropriate distance in order not for me to suffer significant losses. So 45 pips away, 
is the target, okay? If you notice the tail, the, 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 the tail, the, the, um, the tail of the of the candle, if I measure the candle, is uh, it has a range around seven pips, okay? So on pips. Consider that my risk and reward ratio is reward and risk ratio is three to one, okay? That means that the distance, the total distance from the entry price up to the stop loss should be the one third of 45. One third of 45 is 15 pips because I have predetermined that I want to gain three times more of what I'm risking, okay? Right, so I'm risking 45 pips. So I want to be rewarded with 45 pips if with risk being maximum at 15 pips away. So having in mind that the range, so the range is already seven, so that means that my stop loss needs to be another eight above the tail in order this to be equal to seven to 15, okay? Okay, this by the way is a shooting star formation, which is a bearish signal. So the stop loss size, the spine stop should be 15 pips away in total from the entry price. If a shooting star formation appears, like in this case, at a support at the resistance level, and let's say that we use this as a sell signal, because obviously, I mean, if the momentum is likely to reverse up, here the upside momentum, then we need something to indicate that this is happening. So. So, um, so because we have all this, all, this overall picture that is moving sideways, bouncing between support and resistance level. So by spotting a, a, a shooting star formation at resistance level, it's a level, it's, it's a trigger point to sell. If you spot an evening star formation or any kind of bullish candle uh, pattern, at the support level, that could trigger a long position. The mentality is the same, the concept is the same. By the way, also it doesn't matter which time frame it is. What I'm trying to say is that if you have spotted a sideways movement like this one in a channel, in a daily chart, but you have seen an evening star formation in four hour, shooting star formation in the four hour, one, then you can take your uh, 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 entry level uh, based on the indication that you have seen on the shooting star formation that you have seen in the uh, four hour chart and having uh, as your targets the support and resistance level that you have spot in the daily chart. Okay, so several times time frames can be used. That depends solely on your on the ones that you are using, but don't go more than one scale higher or lower. Okay. Uh, okay. We have set that. So we have put with this way some room above the tail by adding another the eight pips, the distance eight pips away from the tail. So in total, fifteen pips from the uh, from the entry. We are we are actually uh, putting some room above the high of the candle just to make sure that this is the price which soars up that is not going to stop us out too quickly um, um, uh, before it turns into our direction. Um, uh, okay, so this is just an example. Let's move on. Using pivots, another way, another different way to, uh, that you could, I could help you to find your targets, your single uh, uh, target. So let's move forward, okay? We can use a pivot as well as a price target because pivot analysis is, uh, is actually pro providing us multiple support levels and multiple target levels. So it's the same exact co um, 
um, concept, but with this uh, way, we are using pivots. We have, without thinking a lot, we have supporting the resistance levels there, spotted, highlighted, and we don't need to do a lot of uh, thinking or a lot of um, um, a lot of preparation. Um, so. Uh, um, so, and I will show you right now what I mean. So, we can choose a prominent pivot high or a low in a higher time frame chart to be our exit levels. Okay, this is a copper. It doesn't matter what kind of chart it is. It is a copper though. Okay, and you can see, uh, uh, you can see that before this sharp drift happens, we had several signals that the acid is turning bearish, that the, there is an increasing bearish momentum, an increasing selling pressure from RSI. It was something that we were, it was, it was an indication that it was slowing down, MACD as well, but regardless of that, okay, we could see that from the lower uh, pivots, the lower fractals. Nonetheless, uh, so as you can see, okay, before all this happens, just ignore this for now. As you can see, it was slightly, it was moving higher, higher, but at some point it stuck a bit. Okay, stuck. It, it had a repeated floor over here and it was unable to extend higher above 290 level. Retested, retested, turned back again, retested, turned back, retested, turned back. So it really stuck within a range for a few, uh, few days. Okay, that was the very first signal that, mm, um, there is no more upside momentum. There was a very first hint, okay? But uh, so it was bouncing, struggling to extend higher to put any uh, higher level, any higher, any uh, further rally to continue. So that was the very first indication. So this is, by the way, um, this is a four hour chart, if I'm not mistaken. Let me let move on so you can see it as well. Yeah, this is a four hour chart. But before I just analyze further, I want to focus on this one first. Okay, so, um, so just to clear, okay, so this was our support and the latest high was our resistance, okay? So in this kind of market, what we are looking is to sell, to find sell signals, okay, uh, at the resistance levels or buying signals at the support level. So since we're in a four hour chart, in order to spot a sell signal at resistance level, we need to go down to the one uh, hour chart and, tr and see whether there is anything that proves or signals, sorry, a short position, a sell signal. Okay, so you can go down one scale down to the one hour chart since you are in a four hour chart to check how things uh, develop in the one hour chart, whether there is a sell signal that could confirm that the asset uh, is slowly, slowly turning into a, 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 a negative outlook. There are a couple of things that you could use as a sell signal, okay, like, uh, 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 like Bollinger Bands, we have closing price crossing below the Bollinger Bands, uh, or uh, candlestick formations like the shooting star formation and the evening star formation, etc. Uh, or 
you can combine all these with your RSI, your MACD, just to confirm, just for confirmation. Okay. So this is what you should start looking. You should go down. Since you have spotted your initial support and resistance level in the uh, four-hour chart, you can go down to the one-hour chart. Over here, I have a screenshot of the one-hour chart in which we have spotted a double it's not a double top, but it's tried to break the resistance twice, unable, and it quickly with a full body bearish candle and another one that followed exactly afterwards, it, it, it completely reverted away from the resistance level. Okay, and this this was interpreted with this way in a, in a four hour chart and it was seen in the one hour chart with this way complete pullback um, so that was when it triggered my attention i said oops what's going on over here um so it was uh, it was ringing the bell for further investigation okay Um, so, like every it's in every single case, in this one, it was often and sometimes happens. I mean, the price to moves through the level we through the level, but we cannot know beforehand if the price is going to turn at our level. But uh, yeah, that that that's one option. You can set your target. Um, uh, using the pivot points, uh, but let me let me explain. Let me explain. So, so you see, this is a four-hour chart, and this is what we have seen the one-hour chart. So it was the very very first signal. You might uh, you might not be sure that this is an entry signal to enter short. But what happened afterwards, the lower pivot that followed, okay, that was uh, another another uh, signal that, yes, is turning lower. It has entered a negative moment. And I said, if you're not, uh, I just said that if you cannot, if you are not so good on, on reading the candles, use also your tools because and you see that RSI was slowing and providing lower highs. MACD was moving lower and lower. It was positive, but it was moving lower and lower. So these supported further the scenario of a short position. So you can use, remember, pivot points. Support, the latest high is the resistance. So even if I didn't really spot this one, but I have seen this lower uh, uh, pivot here, I could enter short, right? I could have entered short um, with uh, target levels, with multiple target levels, to be honest. So let me clear a bit this mess and let's assume Raise all, perfect. Let's assume that I have entered on the completion of this latest, of this second uh, lower pivot. So the completion means that this happened here because for completing, for posting a pivot, we need five candles. One, two, three, four, five. So here. So let's assume that I have entered here. Okay, this is my entry very very close to the support level the resistance is over here right so i need to measure the distance the distance of the uh of it's a self position right the distance from the entry level to the next pivot the next pivot is here can you see it so that means Mm, from 185 
285 to 281. That means around 40 pips. So here is my 31st target, 40 pips away from the entry. So where should I send set my stop loss? Not at the resistance, even though that seems ideal. But remember, risk and reward ratio. So I would like having in mind, I want my risk and reward ratio to be 3 to 1 or 2 to 1. That means that my, uh, my stop loss should be 20 pips away from the entry. So that is taking us somewhere. Uh, that was 285, 280. Seven. So that should be somewhere here. Somewhere here. It's not precise. Okay, just 20 pips away from the uh, entry. Or, or that's fine. You might have didn't chose this target. You might have chose this one, which is a double pivot. So it, and it looks a more uh, strong support level. So that's around 60 pips away. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as your risk and reward ratio does matter. But what I'm trying to say is that whatever, regardless of the way that you're gonna, of the strategy that you follow, make sure that your stop loss is at a reasonable distance based on the target that you have uh, that you have chosen. Or another way, you can use your pivot points. Why not? Uh, your, uh, sorry, Bollinger Bands. Like we have said that our entry was somewhere here, right? On the close of that candle. So you can use the, 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 uh, uh, the pivot points as your stop loss, right? And, um, um, so you can use either the Bollinger Band uh, line or slightly above the Bollinger Band line as your stop loss. And then based on that, measure the distance and set your target twice or three times away from the entry based on the risk and reward ratio that you have chosen, right? So let's move on. We're halfway nearly. Procedure, just to highlight everything. Oops, oh, sorry. Uh, what's the procedure? When you're looking the two sets, stop and target levels. Basically, first of all, you need to identify a potential entry formation, either that might be candlestick pattern, uh, I don't know, uh, break out of Bollinger's, break out of uh, support and resistance level, pivot points, whatever you are using. Okay, this is the very first thing is you need to identify a potential entry formation and the level, the price has been moving upwards and then it tells and moves sideways. You need to identify all this. Also, you need to identify stop and target levels. So, first of all, okay, let's resume. You need to identify any formation in which your uh, price is moving. It might be sideways, it might be upwards, it might be downwards, it might be in a triangle, it might be in a descending triangle, ascending triangle, it might be in a head and shoulder formation, whatever. Next, identify stop and target level based on the uh, on what you have done in the step one. So you need to identify stop and target levels in order to be able to sell stops. So that will be somewhere below the formation and based on the width of the formation as we have already seen. Uh, and you basically set your sell limit at the width of the triangles. The width of the triangle, I remind you that it gives you that sell limit 
that you can use to calculate the position size based on a couple of things like account size, risk constant. Um, uh, okay, I will tell you more about risk constant in a few slides, but it's basically helping you to keep the risk the risk constant. Uh, I mean, if you are a trader that sees trades going in your favor, sometimes you make a little bit of money and uh, you're getting a bit greedy. So that's where you need to keep your risk constant. Um, in order to uh, control the emotions and etc., because uh, uh, in order to avoid any huge losses, especially for the, the newbies, the newbies, the new traders. Uh, what else? Do I... Then uh, you can enter the trade because you have already spotted support, resistance level, stop, and target levels. You have identified an entry. You have calculated your risk and reward ratio, the position size that you want. Then you can enter the trade as the signal comes. So at the breakout of the triangle or at the breakout of support and resistance level, you can actually enter the trade. Or if you don't want to stay on your PC waiting and waiting, waiting for the asset to break your formation, then you can use pending orders. Okay, you can say, okay, uh, open a long position as soon as the asset moves above above this level. That's why pending orders are there because we they help us not to be there 24/7 and watching the charts and waiting for any breakout. So if the limit is triggered, the position, so once the position is open, et cetera, and it's running, if the limit is triggered, the position is closed automatically and the stop order automatically canceled. With this way, you are giving any freak out emotions out of your trades. Uh, multiple targets can be integrated in a strategy with Bollinger Bands as well. Okay, so you can use multiple uh, targets. The way to do that is by uh, finding different multiple support and resistance levels. One way to do that is using multiple Bollinger Bands. Uh, so, with different deviations, basically. Over here, I have a euro dollar in which I use uh, the very first Bollinger Band that I use. It was with two standard deviation. The second was with five standard deviation, and the third was with eight standard deviation. So, what can I achieve with that? That can help me spot several support and resistance levels, which I will eventually use as several targets. But be careful, be careful. Uh, if you have decided, okay, to end to open a trade with multiple targets, okay, such as this one, okay, such as this one, what happened over here? What happened over here is that we have it had spotted an entry level, okay, it has spotted an entry level uh, on this pullback. From the Bollinger, right? Bullish, dodgy, dodgy with long tails lower, indicating that there is some kind of a selling pressure and a bearish one, suggesting a pullback. So, a, an entry, an entry, a, a selling a position at the at the upper Bollinger. Okay, and used as targets the multiple Bollingers. Okay, that's fine. That's very, very okay. But how you can do that? You can either open three different positions, but if you had calculated, if because this, this is the steps that you need to follow, right? Remember that we need to calculate the position size in advance, right? And the risk and reward ratio in advance and the account size. So first of all, this is the entry. So, um, so uh, sorry, I'm running out of steam. So, 
So as I was saying, uh, this is a one hour chart and uh, yes. Uh, so let's assume that he, he decided to uh, calculate to have a position size uh, around one pip. One pip, okay. Okay. He's, uh, so, oh, the stop loss should be slightly above the top of the formation, right? The, 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 uh, slightly above the uh, entry level, but, but since he's using these multiple targets, okay, we need to measure, first of all, the distance between the first entry and the first target. So the distance between the first entry and the, the, the entry and the first target is around, let me do the math. So entry is at 1856. Entry is at 1856, okay? This is the entry. First target, target one is at, uh, where is it? Uh, 1825. So the distance between this is around uh, 31, right? 31. So an appropriate stop loss, sorry, oh, based on our risk and reward ratio should be around, where is it, where is it? So ne ne stop, first of all, guys, have in mind that the stop needs to go above the high of this formation that we have spot above this, this candle, so it should be above it. So it's placed at 1875, so that's around, 21 pips higher. Okay, okay. The very first target, and that, that was just slightly above it. Okay, so uh, what I'm saying, 1775, 1856, uh, one correct. The, the pivot highs were at the 1868, right? Just uh, Entry was taken. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Do you do you understand what I'm doing? So the entry was taken here. One eight one. This this pullback was completed. One eight fifty six. The one eight fifty six. But the the edge of this formation of this this latest high was at one eight sixty eight. So this distance is around one thirty two. 12 pips. So we have added another nine pips, so in total 21, just to have a, a bit more how can I say, a safer distance from the entry. So it's slightly above it. Okay, so we have stop loss at 21 pips away from the entry level. First, first target based on the Bollinger Bands area with standard deviation two, it is 31. Um, uh, points away. Target two is uh, around, so this is 31 pips away. This is uh, 1791. So we have another, um, we have another 25 and 9, 34 pips. And we have another that's 31, 30, uh, 34, and this target two from target three is around, come on, come on, 1791 minus 1757 equals 34, another 34, 31, 34, 34. If I sum this up, 34 and 34 and 31, this is a total. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in 99 pips 
uh, the, the distance, the entry from the very final target is around 99 pips at distance. So let me double check, minus 1757 equals, yes, 99 pips. So 99 pips with stop loss being just, just 21 pips away. So that's a risk and reward. Uh, nearly five to one, four, four, four to one. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing, okay, if we, you can use multiple targets, fair enough, you can use multiple Bollinger Bands, okay, stop losses at a very, very reasonable level just to avoid any noise and etc. It's quite tight, so it's okay, it's not far away, etc. So, however, uh, you need to figure out in advance the position size, right? So if you have predetermined that it should be a full lot, that means that you have to split it. So let's assume that 50% of this position will be in the very first target. So no 0.5 uh, lots for the first target, no 0.25 for the second target, another no 0.25 in the final target. Don't open three positions with one full lot each. That should be one lot, not pip lot. Okay, that's a massive. Uh, uh, that, uh, if you have a full lot, that means you are risking a lot of your capital. So you need to predetermine the overall position size. And if you're going to use multiple targets, then split it. Is that clear? Are you still with me? Or I'm all alone over here. And here is the standard deviation, the targets that they were suggested, the stop loss was above the uh, pivot high. Or another way to uh, uh, set a stop loss, it could be at the edge, at the pivot, at the, at the Bollinger, at the upper Bollinger, at the time of the entry, okay? Um, what else? The entry was triggered as soon as we had this pullback um, away from the upper Bollinger. And this is an example that you can uh, study um, as well yourself. Um, also, another way to figure out the position size with the is the risk percentage calculator. So over here, this is on this is on the website, by the way. You can add the asset that you're trading. You can put on your potential entry level, whether you want to buy and sell. You can put your stop loss, what you're thinking, like a stop loss at least, what you are having in mind, your balance, and you can put also how much you're willing to risk from this account, so from this balance. So if you have 10,000, for example, and you want to risk only the 2% in this, in this trade, that means you are risking $200, right? So having 200, I want to risk, I'm willing to risk only $200. So how you can convert, how you can figure out the uh, lot size for $200, it gives it to you. So you can, in order not to um, risk more than 200, it means that your lot size should be 105. And stop loss in pips is 19 pips away. Okay? So risk calculator can help you figure out your uh, position size. Later on, we have another uh, also, also in the same um, calculator page, we have the multi-target, multi-price target calculator. What well, that does, by putting all the details on, right, your uh, lot size that you have already f f calculated with the risk percentage calculator, your entry level, what you are thinking for stop loss, the target the targets that the Bollinger Bands have, have present to you, have shown you, splitting your position size based on these three uh, targets. So it gives you how much 
you will profit or lose if you have uh, if based on this um, uh, on this um, data. So if the first target is triggered, then you will gain one hundred and fifty five dollars. If it keeps moving lower and it kicks your second target, you will benefit. You will profit another one hundred and sixty two dollars. If it hits also your third target is 247. So in total, if it hits all three targets, you will benefit 565. Okay. Uh, if it's something turns against you now, so it doesn't kick the first target, but it kicks a stop loss, then you can close all the positions just to avoid any um, further uh, loss. Um, yes, I can, my dear. Um, yes, I can, uh, dear uh, prayer. I'm gonna send you something that I uh, do. I have it. Um, okay, I cannot send pictures over here. How can I do it? You know what? I'm gonna. Uh, so fine. Okay, I have put in a, in the handout section, I, can, I have put in order types, an order types uh, explanation. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, um, give me a second. <clears throat> Okay. Sorry, the questions. And okay, here it is, my dear uh, prayer. So uh, these are uh, types of um, for, of orders, position orders. Okay. So. Um, so they, these are some basic order types that you can use. I'm sorry, pending orders. So if you if you don't want to waste your time and uh, keep watching the charts and waiting until it trigger an entry, you can set 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 as we said pending orders. So if based on the analysis that you have done on the formation that you have spotted and etc., you want to enter long once the asset moves above a particular level then you need to choose the buy stop if you want to enter short sorry if the asset moves below a particular level then you can use sell stop like in the beginning when i show the triangle like here if we if we wanted, because we didn't want to wait, we said that okay, you know what? Uh, if the if the uh, price breaks this level, I want you to open automatically a long position. That is a that is a buy stop, and the same mentality is for adding a sell stop. Now, the limit is a bit different. The buy limit is. Uh, the buy limit, the limit orders, and the sell limit are a bit different. So, a limit order, first of all, is an order place to either buy below the market or sell above the market. So, you're placing buy, a buy limit by saying that um, I want to enter long if my asset rejects and bounce away from a particular level. So these are things that you can use in a channel, for example. So like the example we gave, uh, okay, here, here. If you have spotted that your asset is moving in a channel, right? So theory says that every time that is retesting or bouncing away from the lower line, 
it will go higher and retest the upper line. So here, okay, beforehand, before it actually um, goes down to the lower line and rebounds, you can set in advance. Um, you have you could have set in advance. Okay, here we are. You see a buy leaning saying that. Let's assume that this level is at I don't know. Uh, if we are here, that means that. Where is it? Okay. So let's assume that you have spotted a trend line, a channel. So actually, let me find a real example for you, okay? Uh, real example, that's not easy to be spotted, but. Okay, okay, that will be okay, I think. Or. Okay, let's assume, okay, this is uh, Aussie, okay. That's not great. Let me change a bit there. Uh, okay, that's okay. Let's, so let's assume that you were, you were somewhere. Zoom in, let me zoom in. Let's assume that you are here, okay? Oh, sorry. Let's assume that you were here, somewhere here, I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find an example, but okay. Let you have spotted that it's moving in a channel. Okay, perfect. Um, and you want to set in advance a pending order and more precisely um, a buy limit, saying that as soon as it comes down to the lower line, to the lower uh, border barrier of my channel, I want and it rebounds. I want to automatically open a buying position. So what you're doing is basically uh, setting a buy limit, saying that I want to, I will add a new line, I want to my asset, my to open an automatically uh, long position as soon as the asset, I will put it somewhere here and here. If my asset uh, rebounds away from 66.38, okay? So I've used the previous low basically. Okay, I use the previous low. Um, and indeed, as you can see, okay, is it? Ah. And indeed, a few candles later, it came down to this level and rebounded. Another example for the cell for the cell um, for the cell limit now. Okay, this is Aussie. Uh, sorry, this is yen. Uh, it's in a channel since November. Let me clear a bit this mess. Let me clear the the FIBOS at least. So the, the cell limit. The cell limit means that I want you to open automatically a short position as soon as the price um turns away from this particular level okay so my price right now is here it comes to the level that i have predetermined and it started moving away so for example for example yeah this is the the the, the uh the dollar yen let me just be I have spotted that it has this channel. Make sure that your channel is retesting most of the. Let me just set there. That's fine. That's fine. 
So you see, up, bouncing down, up, down, up, down. So it satisfies quite well, so perfect. So you can say that, okay, as soon as, okay, now we are at this stage. Let's assume that we're, it was in advance. Let's assume that you have decided to enter a short position. Here we are. Let's assume that you are somewhere here, okay? Or, I don't know. That's not a great example, because it's already, it's already at the resistance level right now, so. Mm. Nonetheless, okay, let's assume that on uh, last Monday, you decided to put your pending orders. So, what you will say is that, let's assume that this is last Monday. Well, when is the 18th? Let's find the last Monday, 23rd. 23rd is here. Last Monday, you said that, okay, um, it's close to the resistance, to the upper level of the channel. So, we'll set some pending um, some pending orders uh, just to catch any any pullback away from the uh, resistance line. So you could have set a sell limit, okay, saying that as soon as we've seen the asset turning away lower, than the 130, 129 territory, okay? Then uh, enter short. So that would have probably triggered and opened the position uh, the two days afterwards. If you have done this on Monday, so by Wednesday we will have op opened the short position. So now uh, you're breaking even, okay, until it extends further lower. Do you, are you okay so far, prayer? So this is what sell limit and buy limit is. And you can modify your existing order or set it uh, from the very, very beginning as a, um, as a buy limit or sell limit order. Or even now, I mean, it's at the upper channel. So we could say that we could set uh, we could have set a sell limit saying that as soon as it breaks the 128.93, um, actually that uh, should be a sell stop, not the sell limit. So a sell stop could be uh, set yeah, in advance once the asset breaks this latest pivot low at 128.90. So that was pretty much it for today, guys. We are halfway. Um, so this is a two session webinar anyway. Um, we have seen the multi, we have reached the level. Uh, we have also seen the multi price targets using multiple Bollingers. This, here is another example on multiple price targets using, uh, using um, uh, sorry, it's the same, but uh, with dollarize i mean uh in a way that you can understand how much you are uh benefiting or losing if the targets are being triggered so uh in the next session we're gonna see also a um, uh, multi-price target procedure using Fibonacci retracements uh, and we're gonna see also how you can time your exit strategies so i'm gonna leave it over here for now because we're already an hour and a half live and we're gonna resume next time okay any questions before i call it the date nine eight seven six five four three two one okay I'm going to call it a date. Anything you need, I'm here to help. Don't forget that you can contact us at webinars at hfm.com. And well, I'm going to see you next time.
Uh, tomorrow we'll have a live analysis as usual in go to webinar in YouTube, in uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Feel free to join us. And also it's an NFP week. So don't forget that we keep um, uh, we we trying to uh, we will actually we will have another live analysis on Friday during the uh, NFP announcement. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. Hope you're having a great day ahead. Take care. It's a very, very important and crucial week and difficult week. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.